Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got another guest on the line. He's over in the eastern side of the United States. His name is Tom Gledhill. You there, Tom? I am here, Brad. Greetings. How's the weather out there? Any earthquakes or what? hurricanes? What do we got? Yeah, it's a lot of rain. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of rain, and it's going to be real hot you know, this weekend. Yeah, we're going to deliver that. I'm over in Minneapolis. We're going to blow it over towards your direction. It's oh, hot. Thanks for that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, Tom, I do these interviews real quick just to get people to know who you are, because I think video is one of the best ways to know that you're not a internet scammer. You're the real deal, and we find out who you are, where you are, and all that. So, first off, your name is Tom. Are you married and got kids and all that kind of thing? Well, I am a widower. Okay. Um, I have four children and 12 grandchildren. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm uh, a little older <laughs> than, than you probably. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, my wife passed uh, about five, about three years ago now. Uh, and I've been, you know, working. I've got a particular mission that I'm working on right now that I can get into a little later. But, uh, yeah, um, this is about uh, business and making, you know, building relationships and all that. So, your background is in, I think, sales. Is that? Well, I, I started in engineering, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I lasted a year in engineering, and I decided <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So I got into sales, and uh, and I was going for my MBA, and I I, I got my MBA, and then I, I switched to a, a management consulting company. And uh, but in my career, I founded four companies. Uh, my last company was a software company. Uh, we provided information systems for the healthcare industry, and um, at, it, and we we did very well. We became one of the most successful in our market niche in uh, in the Northeast. And uh, at so at a point in time, there was a mass consolidation, so we either sold or or uh, bought other companies. So we decided we we're going to put the company on the market, and so we did put the company on the market and sold it. Thought we got a, a good deal. Uh, um, I didn't know really what I wanted to do after that, but a friend approached me and uh, he said, you know, with your background, he said, you should get into mergers and acquisitions and help other people sell their companies. So that's what I did. And uh, at one time I was sitting in a classroom studying for my certification and we're studying valuation. And I realized that I had left a lot of money on the table when I sold my company. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. No. It, you know, we did, we did okay. We did well. But we could have done better because our company wasn't positioned uh, properly. I get, I get it. There, I had an exposition company, and we were doing very, very well. But when you cr crunch the numbers and you look at it and you find out how much of this stuff we could have, we could have made a lot more just by making a couple little changes. That's right. Yeah, and you're exactly right. I mean, you've got... You've got a business. You've got a you've got a, a company. You've got staff. You've got revenues. You've got some infrastructure. You know, you've got everything there. It might be just tweaking a few things, yeah. but you've got to know what to tweak, right? And you've got to know uh, basically who your buyers are, right? So basically, uh, what I what I did was, um, it, early on, I found that I heard read and heard that only one in four small businesses that go to market actually sell. So, really? <laughs> but I, you know, I didn't believe that. That sounded No, you really think if you got a business that's working and stuff, people just say, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, right. And that's what most business owners think. So, But anyway, after talking to hundreds of business owners I, and walking away and not being able to sell their company, and sometimes I found out a you know, right off the bat that the company's not saleable. Other times I put it on the market and found out that, you know, it wasn't, nobody wanted it. So, um, and, and, you know, one of the problems is that the business owners are not even aware of that. Mm -hmm. Because a study, a study by Pepperdine University and the University of Chicago and other organizations has determined that only about 80%, uh, over 80% of business owners don't have any idea done nothing about exit planning, know nothing about the value of their company uh, or who's going to buy it. And, uh, and they wake up one morning and say, do you think I'll sell my company? Or they plan to sell it, I think, because they want to retire or they want to get involved in something else. And they find out they can't sell it. Now, and the other thing that they found with the study, I think Pepperdine, again, was involved in this study. They found that the majority 
of the net worth of most of these business owners is in the company. So if they can't sell their company, they don't have access to that money. Yeah, I suppose if a, if a company is like a business owner is doing this and it's really a labor of love and that's what's been keeping it going because they really love it, nobody else probably wants that job. They're just buying a job and a lot of people don't want to buy a job. They want to buy a revenue producing business. You, you got it, Brad. You hit the nail right on the head. Uh, they also, their company is, is not run effectively or efficiently. Yeah. So they're working in their business and not on their business. Michael Gerber. So they're just <laughs> so involved in the day-to-day -day operations that they don't have time to look around, you know, and smell the flowers. Right. So, so you know, my mission going forward really is, is to make people aware, because they're not even aware of the problem is to make as many of these small business owners aware of the problem and to provide a simple methodology for them to fix the problem. Do you, because do you provide like a little class or something that uh, like coaching or consulting on people? Like maybe someone's got a business and it's going good. They're thinking about exiting and selling, but they don't really know. Can you, can you, do you have like a pre just to get to know a little bit before they maybe hire you as a consultant? Well, I, I think I have a little bit more than that. Oh. I've, uh, I've developed, I've developed, uh, you know, I, I came up with a four-step process, and the four-step process basically is rating, ra uh, analyzing, and rating your company. Now you're a business owner, analyzing and rating your company, and then determining who the business buyers are, what the buyer types are, mm -hmm. and what are they looking for. Okay, and then matching what the buyers want. Buyer, the buyer type you chose and want to what you have to offer. Now, what I've come up with is I've, I've systematized this methodology. Sure. And I've written a book about it, and I've developed an online course about it. So people can do it themselves because if they hired a consultant to do this, it would cost them thousands of dollars. Sure. Now, and I know that because I've done it. And I've charged between five and ten thousand dollars for these small business owners, but most small business owners will not pay it, or they can't pay it, either one. So, this this uh, online course that I've done allows them to do it themselves, because when a consultant comes in to do an analysis, where do they get their information? Sure, you get it right from the guy, the person that's trying to do it. Yeah. You got it. From the business owner. Oh, that's right. That's kind. Of, I mean, the internet is fascinating that it's kind of done all that instead of you having to fly into Minneapolis and have a talk with me and me to fly out there to Massachusetts and talk with you. You end up just going online, answering all the questions, and then we can have a real conversation. Right. Wow. Right. That's genius. <laughs> or they can have a conversation with a business coach, not okay. necessarily me, but a, but a business coach that's in the area. Okay. Somebody in Minneapolis, for instance, they cool. take the course. They take the course, and uh, the course, the objectives of the course are to tell the business owner what's wrong with this company, what needs to be fixed specifically to appeal to a specific buyer type, okay, and and then to uh, and what his company is worth at that point in time. So that's point A. Then he determines what he wants point B to be, okay, and then he comes up with a plan to get from point A to point B. Now, at any point along the way, he can hire a business coach to help him. Sure. Because what, what do they need? The basic thing they need is accountability, right? They yeah. know what they're going to do. They know what they want to do. But they need to be held accountable to somebody. And that's what a, a good business coach to do is, is hold them accountable. Right. But what I have uh, in addition to that, Brad, is, is a free workshop. So they can take the workshop. You know, they can learn the, the four-step process. They can learn who the buyer types are. And they can do it themselves if they want to. Or they can take the course. And the course then hold, can hold them accountable, but it gives them a roadmap to get from point A to point B. Okay. And I've got, I've got templates for business plans uh, and, and plans to get from point A to point B uh, that they can use to get there, to help them get there. Well, here's the literal million dollar question is how do we find out how to get these access to this information? I'm assuming you have a website and all that kind of stuff. How do we find it? Great question. <laughs> and it's a very simple uh, URL. 
and it's called Exit Pro, X, but there's no E. It's X I T P R O S dot com. Oh, like X It Pro. That's right. Very cool. Exit, exit Pros, and there's an S on there. X I T P R O S dot com. Oh, so you do more than just one person, you do a bunch of them. Bunch of them. <laughs> Plural, not singular. There are over five million businesses between half a million dollars in revenue and five million in revenue, which is wow. kind of it's the target market. Now, also lower and higher, obviously, can participate if they want to. But there are over five million, and if if over seventy five percent don't sell, that's over three point seven million. And if you if you do the if you do the math and you make some conservative assumptions. You come up with over two trillion dollars in money that just goes up into cyberspace. Well, here's, okay. they, they say not to assume, but I'm going to assume that. Uh, I mean, I have to keep these kind of short, so I'm going to close it off pretty soon here. But I'm assuming that in addition to helping people sell, you might have the opportunity to help people buy. Right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> that was That's a good right. assumption. I didn't do the assume thing. <laughs> yeah. All, all of these things, uh, you know, work both sides of the table. <laughs> The yin and the yin. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to kind of close this off. Is there anything else you want to say before we leave? And if you want to stay on, we can have a little further chat. And then what I do is I beam this up to the Internet and then propagate it out to the universe so that people can find it. Okay. Anything else you got? Well, I think, you know, basically my mission, again, is to make as many people aware of the problem. That's number one. Make them aware of the problem. Make them start thinking about the exit. But this not only helps people getting ready to, to sell their company, but it helps anybody along the way, along the, the spectrum from startup to, you know, the exit. To build because, it for that purpose. That's right, because right. you make your company more effective and efficient, you know, and you make more money. It's easier to get a bank loan. You know, mm -hmm. you make your company saleable in case some outside event that right. you can't control. I get you it. Know? I mean, some people make a mistake of calling it their name and now... They can't sell it because it's their name. Right. Unless they're going to brand like some kind of character or icon or something around it or something. Yeah. I get it. Well, Tom, I appreciate you taking the time from over there on the east side. And uh, uh, perhaps we'll do some more of these. I like talking business and marketing strategy because that's what I do. So oh, thanks again for taking the time. You. If you want to stick on, we'll, uh, we'll talk further. But peace, love, and happiness. You will. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you, Brad. Okay. <laughs>